What's up, Valverde? How you doing? Duncan Casey. Two in a car. Hashtag Richard two Jackson. in a car. Coming at you. Two men in a car. In a car. Park and ride. Car park. Um, just thought we'd throw up our mailbag episode. Um, rough and ready though it is. We've just come back from Mr. Watson's and have half. half yeah, had, had drunk many beers and, and, and ate many bad like things. Like a big and, pile of lads. Yeah. Laddy, laddy, lads. Lads, 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 lads. Very lads. Lad. Uh, so we thought we'd, we'd quickly, we've, we've, we've been a bit uh, remiss in getting this, this or last month's mailbag uh, up to you. And we've only got a few questions, so we thought we'd throw it together now and... Um, I'll be the question boy. I'll be the question boy. So I'll read you the question you answer, then I'll give my answer. Okay. Is that right? All right, yeah. Uh, I'm not wearing any corrective lenses. Ow. It's from Jamie Sutherland. Jamie Sutherland. Jamie, Sutherland. friend of the show. Yeah. Uh, I don't know... Oh, no, I'll go straight to the question. What would you say is the best experience you've had making videos for Val Valley Broadcasting and Redacted, meaning the other channel? What's your best experience? Uh, um, I Just the the, the the laughs, man, the lols, I think. Like, mm. the, the, the fact that, like, we can have so much fun with it and it and it's... And be, sort of, at least, hopefully, at times, kind of informational and... Um, and and all, is information all a word? I don't know. I think that's good. It's good enough for Let's me. I'm that. happy. I'm happy. Um, yeah, it's it's like um, I think I think that's the best part of it is just the fact that you get to kind of like yeah. It's also I think there's nothing better than when someone throws a reference up that's really obscure but everyone gets it and it's you know you have you have moments like that that are just really nice. So I suppose it's that kind of kindred spirit. It's like having a laugh around something that you're also passionate about. That kind of thing. You know, that's about. I mean, I don't know. What about you? <laughs> Uh, in terms of, as, uh, I'll go for a more singular experience. Oh, right, I yeah. really liked doing the live show in Pimpshway. Okay, yeah. And mm-hmm. we'd like to do something like that again someday. Yeah. But, um, at the moment, nobody knows we exist. <laughs> but I, I got a fucking huge buzz out of that. I thought it was loads of fun. That was fun, yeah. Um, really, really fun. And and writing it was fun because we did most of the writing on that. And doing the quiz live was fun and meeting like loads of followers and stuff. That was really fun. Um, I really liked Comic Con as well in the. That was like a kind of long-standing thing I've always wanted to do is like be on stage at Comic Con, mm. and we did it in a kind of slightly ropey way and in a very hungover way, but um, <laughs> we did do it. So there was that. So the live stuff really, and just the general lols, like like he says, it's good fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Onward. Omar Zambon writes, "Hi, Richard and Duncan. Uh, I'm going to go to your question first. Okay. Because there are two. Yeah. Duncan, what is the best film of the year so far, and when is your next film coming out?" Well, that's timely. Well, that is timely. My next film is out. Has just come out just uh, yesterday uh, in the states, Omar. So I don't know if you're you're uh, a, a, a um, American, a, American, American, or a um, a bright. <laughs> but um, if uh, no, it's uh, it's it's a fistful of lead, directed by Mark Price, who was uh, also out with us last night, and. Uh, that's out now. Uh, my best film of the year. That's an interesting one. I haven't really seen any good films this year. I, I've not... What did I go to the cinema to see? I was at the Aquaman premiere last Monday, but there's an embargo on talking about that, so... Hmm. Um, certainly would not be my best film of the year. <laughs> um, I don't know, really. Well, uh, yeah, you've you, you been out. I mean, because fucking hell, I think you, you went to watch The Predator, didn't you? The Predator. The we Predator. Oh, right. It was, yeah, that was... Uh, Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that, that happened. That, yeah, definitely, that, happened. that definitely happened. Definitely happened. Um, I, yeah, well, I don't think. What about been... Netflix? Some Netflix original film or something like that. Yeah, I tried watching the whole Whacking Phoenix weird film, whatever that was called. You're not really here or something, and that didn't. I didn't really click with that. Um, don't know. That's a very good question. I don't really think I've seen anything that I really like this year. Or maybe I, it's the trouble is when you get to December, it's like you you got to cast your mind back so far. For a year, like I'm like, was that this year or was that last year? I don't know. I've been watching a lot mm. of TV series this this year. Yes, I don't know. Sorry, Omar. that's a really shit answer, isn't it? Um, uh, first of all, I quite like Creed too. Oh yeah, I haven't seen they that. They didn't ask me, so but they, I like Creed too. It was good. It was a good time. What about uh, you? Haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody? Have you? Honestly. I've not. I've not. I mean, yeah, there's there there be there be positive news about that. Yeah, you know, I'm doing that voice, but <laughs> people are saying Brad's Brad's a fan. Right, I could have lied and said I recommended that. Like I didn't because I was being truthful. Yeah. Well, it, it, on the disappointment train, Omar, <laughs> um, Richard, could you explain to me the difference between XGR and Dolby Vision because it's confusing me? I don't know. <laughs> I straight up don't know, and I think it would be disingenuous for me to go and research that and sort of go like, oh well, actually, because I don't know. I mean, high dynamic range and Dolby Vision. Sorry, man, I don't want to. But I, I, I like Creed too. 
rather jolly a lot, but I haven't been to the cinema that much, so just to continue from my colleague. Um, Adventures Infinity War came out this year. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's Infinity my favourite film of the year. That was what I'd recommend. Very good, go. very good. Thank there you. There you go. Uh, Steve. Just to, merely Steve. Um, hi, Steve. Steve. How do you feel about sci fi books? Any recommendations? And also, Richard, now that you're bald, feel any different? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feel the second question first. It's fucking cold, man. Like, the first winter without hair has been freezing. I've had to be, I've been thrown into the hat market. I'm something I've never did before. Weird. He's the one wearing the hat. Which I think is very. Is that, can I see your logo? That's the same as mine. Is it? Yeah, with a different colour. Yeah, nice. Oh. Um, yeah. Bye, Marnie. Oh, is that think, where it came from? I think my, so. My bro gave it to me when I was lamenting my cold head. It's Aww. really cold, and I have to bick it every couple of days. But when you bick it fresh, yeah, it feels good. Does it? Run your hands over it. Mm. Feels good. Uh, so yeah, cold. Um, sci-fi books. I've always wanted to shave my head. Like, like I, I'd have to do it for a roll, really, because if it's I just did it, satisfying. I'd really piss my agent off because he'd be like, "Well, yeah, I can't." <laughs> You're going to have to wait like three months before you. You can do keep it. all the hair and wear it as a, as a rug. <laughs> <laughs> in between roles it's That's very satisfying true. I tell you what it, it takes it takes a while to get used to doing it properly yeah yeah totally because the first couple of times I used to find patches that I just could not get off right. not noticeable ones so that's what to you mm-hmm. but when the first time you get a smooth one and mm-hmm. you feel like Hitman Cloud Name 47 <laughs> uh, with the barcode on your head it's, it's, it's a good time nice it's a good time and it's and it, it, you know I like to give away my pot of um, hair wax oh. that's it I've, I've you know I was burning through combs that's that's over. <laughs> Read your <vein. laughs> Right, sci-fi books though. I don't know. So you're not a big sci-fi book guy. No. I am. I, I kind of <laughs> am. But cool. there's a there's a market there, but there's a huge huge amount of sci-fi books, and I tend to go back to. So I really liked um, Isaac Asimov's collected short stories. Never read any his long form stuff. Harry Harrison, I liked, and he had a good kind of knack. For kind of uh, humour and parody. Um, there was uh, Robert Heinlein, so I read obviously Starship Troopers. Uh, Gold, what else? I read the Red Dwarf books actually when I was a kid, I really liked those. Hitchhiker's Guide, Douglas Adams, of course. Um, that I have read. The, yeah, yeah that's kind of a broader thing because that's kind of yeah. comedy, really. Yeah. Um, uh, Richard Matheson, I Am Legend, uh, Shrinking Man, you know. Um, so that, that kind of pulp era of sci fi books I was really into, and again, short stories in particular, and Philip K. Dick. Love Philip K. Dick shorts like Asimov and 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 Jack. I I was a huge fan of. But when you there are loads and loads and loads of multi-part book series called like the Schmenlang Chronicles or whatever. <laughs> Schmenlang's your go-to thing. Schmendeng Schmenlang Schmendengelang Schmendengelang Schkernch. I love made-up words. <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of malarkey. I'm not really into that, and and that's really involved. Right. You know, I used to like just sort of your one and done. Yeah. And your kind of classics. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I drew. That's what I like. Nice. Probably bought boring art today because everybody knows about that. It's sort of like, oh, do you well, like paintings? Have you heard of uh, Da Vinci? <laughs> it's a bit... I guess yeah. it's standard. But no, they're good. They're good choices. I don't know. Uh, this is from Andre Joseph, who I just met recently. Nice. I met Andre in, in the London. Yeah, it's good to see you, mate. Um, I soon as I pass some deets on to you about Cambridge Film Festival. But that's another story. What... What would be your ideal story direction for Die Hard Six? This is in danger of becoming a miniature, a miniaturised pictures, please. Pictures leave. Pictures leave. leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's we get a lot of those, don't we? I, I, I suppose I. Again, like it's really lazy. So, but don't just fucking don't anymore. Like it's, but, but yeah, that's my standard go-to. Isn't gun it? to my head. I mean, I guess. I think you know. I think there's, that that people are going to stop giving them money. Or or, put, or or reduce the money that's involved, and I think to just scale it back, man, like scale back. If it's got to be Bruce Willis again, and it's got to be all that, then um, which I guess it would be because it's not it's a Die Hard Six, not a Die Hard reboot. So it's like you've got to um, find a way to scale it back, find a way to make it more kind of great. like like um, Mel Gibson's doing some amazing like sort of smaller indie things. There's He's one called Bloodfather, dra- dragged over concrete as well. Oh yeah, that looks really good. So it's like you know it, 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 that level of stuff, that sort of thing. Like in Edge of Darkness as well was very good actually. Martin Campbell, mm. Georgia, in fact, that was really good. You know, um, so yeah, I'd say. Um, well, well, you know about this Die Hard Year One thing? No. Yeah, well, there's a there's a thing called Die Hard. There was a comic called Die Hard Year One, and it seems the current ongoing pitch is that half the film is McLean now being arrested and framed for a thing, and it's because of a thing that happened to him in the 70s, so the other half of him in the 70s. 
as mm. a play by a different actor. Mm. Which I think is a horribly bad idea because not only have they already trashed the idea that John McClane is just an everyman, but now they're well, going to yeah. go back and say that well, actually, he was also a super cop yeah, before, yeah, and it's just like yeah. and he was in Kosovo or something. It's like I guarantee oh, there'll be a scene of him watching them build Nakatomi Plaza, going, "I hope I've never held hostage there one yeah, day." Chubby, hmm. yeah, chubby, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, I, yeah, I know uh, that that sort of thing is just like. Like you say, he's supposed to be the everyman. He's supposed to be someone like he's the sort of in a way ultimate action protagonist because you're supposed to be able to, you know, imprint upon him. And it's like you can't do that when he's fucking like hanging off of like Harrier jump jets or whatever. And like because even in Die Hard Three, he's like he's still like he was alcoholic. He's flawed, and actually in the original ending, he loses. Yeah, you know, and he's beaten and stuff. And it's it, I I like Die Hard Four more than I should, but yeah, it's him fucking surfing on Harry jump jets and shit. And yeah, you know, it just gets a bit dumb. And Die Hard Five, Jesus Christ! Yeah, the know. less said about that, the better. I mean, I think I I I yeah, I genuinely would take take that. You know, I I don't know. I mean, assuming I, that you mean like a six with Bruce Willis with all this, you know all that in place, I think it's got to be a smaller scale thing. But but why do it? I mean, like you know. It worked arguably twice, maybe thrice. That's about it. It doesn't. It doesn't work to keep fucking upping the ante. And it's like now he's taking over whole, the whole of Russia. He's kind of you know, and like he's driving. What is it? Is he driving like trucks through all the fucking? Yeah, no, like, I don't like to think about Die Hard Five. It makes my balls hurt. Um, I would now. Here's what I would do. This is absolutely serious. I would bring back Holly. Right. And because I think. That's something that got so. When I watched Die Hard 4 and 5, I was really disappointed that Holly wasn't in it because it's just kind of like, come on, like, even if they're divorced, like, that was kind of his anchor and she was as much of a character as he was and mm. she just gets kind of fucking binned off. Mm. So I love Die Hard with a Vengeance, but she's like on the end of the phone at the beginning. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and yeah. it's like Die Hard 4, I want her to come back in some capacity because the kids were fine, like Mary Elizabeth Winsett and Joy fucking Courtney. But like, I want Holly back, and I want to explore their relationship a bit more. I mean, if you have to, and I'd like to have it have more connective tissue to the first one. Yeah. If you had to do it, you know, so I don't know, because there's the, the Die Hard video game on GameCube where like it was Hans Gruber's son, and the last level you end up in Nakatomi Plaza anyway, and it's like, well, what's the point in this? Yeah. But um, yeah, I would bring Holly back. Maybe Reginald Vell Johnson as well. Yeah. Bring back Al Dick Thornburg. <laughs> Just read. I, I'm deadly serious in that you should bring Holly back. But I just don't want it to be a retread. I, yeah. So you got to stop somewhere. So bring Holly back, and I don't know how that'd make that an interesting story. But I just think. Do you know? What? I'd, I'd I'd kill off John McClane as well. I think I would say this is it. It'd almost be my way of saying. If I was a Fox executive, I'd be like, this is my way of saying, fuck you, Bruce Willis. Like, this is your six. This is it. Swan song, motherfucker. Like he's going out because really, so, that's where he needs to go. He's an angsty character, and it's like the only way for redemption for him really is to die in some way. You know? Just fucking. Die because the amount of times is well, I know it's called Die Hard, but like the amount of times it's like, like in Die Hard 4, he fucking shoots through himself to shoot the guy behind him. And like, how many times as well has he used people as human shields in those? Yeah. You know, but, but it's kind of like, oh god, like really, like that's he can survive that, he can survive all that other shit that's in the other films. It's like, kill him off, man, like make have give him some weight back because at the moment it's like he's just this indestructible skinhead nutter. Yeah, and in Die Hard 4, he still, I maintain Die Hard 4, he still had the enthusiasm and the twinkle in his eye. In Die Hard 5, he's just dead behind the eyes. It's just this mm. sad, I've said this before, but I'll use it again. It looks like a tortoise made of foreskin. Like this chronically depressed, penis skin fucking turtle. <laughs> um, so uh, that, Andre, I think was a very involved answer. Uh, but my, my involves bringing back Holly, his involves killing John McClane. I, do, I, I would have uh, you, you get Bruce in mm. you're the Fox Duncan's the Fox executive you get Bruce in you do the whole movies. Thing, <laughs> movies you get the whole film done and you don't tell him that you're killing John McClane and then in the very last scene you have him like Poochie goes up the screen and then it just says John McClane died on the way to his own planet <laughs> and, then that, and then and then hashtag that's canon smash the credits <laughs> hashtag that's canon <laughs> done Right, final question for Mr. Mark Jones. To Richard and Duncan, what are your plans for the Christmas period? Personal or work-related? Also, if you consider doing any live shows, perhaps as a one-off, or to raise money for the channel. Got all that? Uh, what am I doing for Christmas? We do for Christmas, firstly. Personal uh, or work-related? Well, I'm not doing anything work-related on Christmas Day. Um, I will be with family. Yeah. My family. My family. I've got some post-production to do on one job for my work work. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for my work work to wrap up and then I can chill. But I've got the Valverde stuff probably throughout the holidays, as Americans would say. Mm -hmm. Try and film some more. We're going to try and film some more stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just had beers with Brad and we're going to do that again. I hope some kind of Valverde beers. I'm going to see. I'm going to go down south and see all my friends down south in a couple of weeks and we're going to have a fake Christmas day and then uh, a week after that I'm going to come back up here and do the same again with all my friends that live around here. Nice. And then I'm going to see mum mom and pop, go to my parents' house Christmas day and just eat a load, load of food and just sort of get drunk. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully one member of my family will buy me a Nerf gun of some description that I can use to then you know, harangue my brother. It's my birthday in the holidays. Oh, of course, yeah. Nineteenth of December. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm. god, that's not far away. Not far away. Ooh. Well, see, when I'm down for Christmas on the fifteenth, I might just parlay that into my birthday. It saves me organising anything. Yeah, you be like, do, oh, man. I'm better than Jesus. Um, <clears throat> my uncle has his birthday on Christmas Day. That's uh, my housemate does as well. My um, granny did as well. well. You said about that, yeah. No. Do you have? Have you considered any do live show? Have you considered doing any live shows, perhaps as a one-off or to raise money for the channel? Um, yes. Yeah, we just, we spoke about that. Uh, yeah. Mm. We want to. It's just really reaching that critical mass where we can say confidently that enough people will show up, you know, not to make it worthwhile. I mean, I suppose what we could do is, it's very chicken and egg, but it's like put out tickets or something and then if enough people buy them, then or or we'll or take them. pre register be yeah. free or something, right? Yeah. But yeah, we would really like to. When we worked with Oliver, there was 100,000 people following and we we sold 50, well, we, they were free, but we got rid of 50, 50 tickets like that. We have 2% of that following uh, globally. Mm. So we would love to. Like the PowerPoints and the quiz and stuff were really, really fun. We would love to do it. We had a blast doing it. We just worried no bugger would come. Um, so we might, I, we've talked about kind of hitching onto something that's pre existing and just trying to market it as a separate comedy show or something. We'd love to. We would really like to. We need to gauge interest, and maybe when we have more following, we'll try it. But we're just worried that if we set something up and no bugger comes, it'll be a waste of time for everyone. Yeah, I mean, you you can help make that happen by like I know it's it's cliche, but like sharing, liking, all that stuff does help because we're not getting much help elsewhere. Is all I'll say. Um, I don't know what you mean, mate. No, and we, but you know, I mean, we 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 are starting from scratch again, so um, yeah. It, well, more or less. I mean, we're not in lots of ways, but. Mm. You know what I mean. Uh, so, yeah, anything you guys can do if you want to make that happen, that would, or help make that happen, that'd be wonderful. Um, yeah. So what we did talk about briefly was just doing sort of like a meetup. Yeah. So, like, for example, if there's a cool screening going on in London, we would go meet a bunch of you for beers first, and then go watch a movie. So it's like less pressure for a live show. If mm. no bugger comes, we still get to go to the cinema. Um, but <laughs> but we thought it'd be quite nice to meet up in the new year. Yeah. So if there's interest in that, let us know. But in answer to your question, yes, we'd very much like to do live shows, but there isn't an existent kind of base for it at the moment. But I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. I said too. it was my favourite thing in the first question from Jamie. So mm. there you go. Yeah. That's it. No more questions. Like I've emptied all of them out. Oh, they're all, all here the on the floor. floor. Of the car. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for your questions. We really, really uh, appreciate that. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch for the top tier members about the hangout soon because we really need to get on that mm. uh, for the last month. Um, and then we'll have to do another one pretty much, in, you know, shortly thereafter. But um, maybe a Christmas one. But I'm not doing it on Christmas Day because I should be full of food. And, yeah. Why? I think everybody shall. Mm. Is. Um, but. Yeah, thanks so much for your, your questions for this month, and um, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll look forward. We should be doing a big Q and A because uh, we, well, I think we're about to hit two thousand. We're about to hit two thousand, so we're going. For, we, I think we're going to get together next week and record some shit. So we'll probably do the Q and A. If you still want to go back to the two thousand subscriber Q and A video, you can add more your questions in the comments. But I think you will you will got it out. Um, so that should be out before Christmas, I would expect. Yeah, nice, cool. All right. Thanks, guys, and uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Catch you, bye. Bye.